Welcome to Spirit Journey Collective. I'm your host, Sarah Tai. Get ready for compelling conversations with guests of all walks of life who believe they have found their purpose. Together, we will uncover unique backstories, hearing the raw experiences that led them to the work they are doing today. Let's expand our minds together with the captivating stories and inspiration that awaits. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Spirit Journey Collective. I have a really wonderful guest today. Her name is Nina Maglich, and she's an intuitive marketing architect, which already the name has me curious. I love it already. Thank you so much for being here today, Nina. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And hello, everybody who is listening or watching. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, absolutely. And why don't you share a little bit about what it is that you do? What does it mean to be an intuitive marketing architect? I just love that name so much. Can you explain a little more? Yeah, that is a a name I got from my clients and friends. This is how they see me because I'm, I'm a marketing coach for healers. I'm also an energy healer. So I combine marketing in and healing and mindset into my work. And that's why they call me intuitive marketing architect, architect and yeah, I help healers build profitable, predictable, and scalable healing business, step by step with ease and clarity. And I really love what I do. It really combines both worlds because before I became a healer, I was a marketer. I was working in an, ad- in an advertising agency doing marketing campaigns for Fortune 500 companies. And then I got sick. And when nothing really, really helped me, I spent 18 months visiting doctors, doing old blood tests all body scans, nothing really showed why I have a pain. And in that moment when nothing really helped, I reached out to an energy healer and she healed me in just two sessions and it changed my whole life. I started learning more about energy healing. I get really obsessed about that because the more I did it, the better I felt. And that really was the world I wanted to discover. And then I realized it's a big career switch when you go from Fortune 500 companies <laughs> to becoming a healer. It's a, it's a huge jump. And I I always believe that I have to separate my two identities and two personalities. And I felt trapped between two worlds. And then I decided to combine both of them because while I was building my healing business, I helped other healers build their businesses too. I shared what works for me and and we were start to start building businesses together and they got results. And I realized that my passion, my mission is to help healers, help more people heal, and together we can heal millions. That is a really cool story, like background. And and then thank you for explaining it as what you do. But, you know, it's crazy because there are so many healers and those in the service business that have found it kind of the way that you did, not looking for it. They think they found what they were already meant to be doing. So it sounds like you were already a marketing professional. You probably thought you were already checking off all the boxes and then you realize, wait, there's more. (laughs) And you kind of fell into that. And I see that over and over and over, which is really cool. It's like, you could tell there's a big energetic shift when you see multiple people who were doing one thing and then realize that there was so much more that was also fulfilling. It wasn't even just, you know, finding a different passion. It's also something that fulfills them in a completely different way. And I love how you explain how you were basically kind of living in, two, in both worlds. It's like you're living in one world where it's all about the left brain, right? It's very analytical probably. And I'm sure it's creative in its own sense, but it's more businessy. And then you have the healing side, which is more intuitive and right brained and nuanced and I can imagine well I can imagine it's difficult to bring those two together because as a business owner myself I struggle with that side <laughs> you know the intuitive healing piece cool I got that down but the marketing how to draw people to my business it's like I don't know what I'm doing it's a floundering kind of feeling so I love that that you're able to merge those two worlds together because I can see how beneficial that could be for other healers and other service workers. I'd love to know your, so I know you shared a little bit about your backstory and how you kind of were, how you found out you were ill first and, and that brought you to healing. And I, and that's also not uncommon. I hear that a lot. There's dis-ease in the body that turns into illness that usually turns into figuring out what you need to do for yourself that ends in healing and then it ends in helping other people. Like I've heard people struggling with autoimmune diseases and things like that, that just came out of nowhere that they found healing through doing that internal work. So 
the fact that that guided you and you listened intuitively and found something that's also amazing. So like, there's so many pieces to your story. I'd love to like touch on. Did you grow up? Like, was it hard to switch from that more businessy world to healer? Like when, when you started discovering, oh my gosh, this spiritual energy healing works. What was that like to kind of shift from like that more left brain to right brain? I, I want to go a little bit back in my childhood because I started learning about energy healing when I was 14 years old. I learned how to balance chakras and I was doing meditation and yoga, but it wasn't cool 20 years ago. <laughs> and, you know, as 14 years old, like uh, it's really not cool to do like meditation and yoga at that time. So I only practiced with my grandmother. I already knew that this world exists, but I never knew how powerful it is until it really helped me. And when I started doing like energy healing, I felt that this is such a beautiful world where I belong and that I was meant to be there. But at the same time, I there was a business side of me that I really loved. And I really love my background. I love businesses. I love marketing. That's also my another passion. That's my soul gift, actually. And I realized that the most exciting part of this was really building businesses and helping others. That was, for me, so beautiful to watch because it was hard to combine both because when I switched my careers from doing marketing for Fortune 500 companies to becoming a healer, I was so scared what other people are going to say about me and what my clients are going to say about me. I had big clients, what my former bosses, colleagues, high school friends are going to think about me. It took me one year to post on social media that I have a healing business. And I was really, really scared. And seven days after I posted that, I received the card from my former boss, she was also my bachelor thesis mentor, master thesis mentor. She wrote me a card and it said, congratulations, it looks like you found your calling. What can you wish for more? And I cried so much because I realized the only person standing in my way is me. And if I want to build a business that, that is going to touch millions of hearts, I need to overcome myself and my limiting beliefs and my fears. And that's the biggest problem I see so many people have. We don't always have a business problem. We have a me problem because very often we sabotage our businesses. Not like, I would say subconsciously sabotage. We don't even know that we're doing this. And I think that was the biggest thing that really stopped me from building my business at the beginning. And yeah, it was, it just was very hard to say to, to people, I'm a healer now because it was a big, big career switch. Thank you for going into your, your backstory. I love hearing like how people are raised and how unique is it that you actually were kind of already introduced to this work and not just see for me, I, I started around 14, just kind of dabbling in like the woo woo things like tarot and Ouija boards, just the the things that were very opposite of what I was raised with, it was more like a rebellion. But for you, it sounds like you were already being introduced to it with your family. So it was a safe place to explore. And so that's really beautiful. I don't think a lot of people get that experience. I actually um, brought energy healing to my family because I started teaching my grandmother because she was my partner. Uh, with whom I practice energy healing, I practice on my grandmother. Not really that I learned it from my family. I learned that from, it was a course I found accidentally while I was walking down the street and there was like free course chakra balancing and I decided to go and I uh, invited a friend of mine to come with me. And yeah, she didn't like it so much. I continued doing it and then I practiced with my grandmother, but then I stopped doing it as well because I was 14. It wasn't cool. Okay. Oh, that's well, that's even that's even cooler that your family was at least open to like, oh, what is this? And it allowed you that space to be curious. That's so cool. Yeah. See, I I when I was curious, my things disappeared. So like I had tarot cards that just would disappear. <laughs> I was like, no one talked about it. It was just forbidden in my house. <laughs> that's so cool. I don't even think I learned about what chakras were until maybe four or five years ago. I mean, it's such a newer, I mean, I, I was like in 
the supernatural realm, but not like in the spiritual realm until about seven ish years ago. So it's really cool that you kind of, even though you didn't stick with it, you came back to it, right? There's a reason you were drawn to it at 14, but I totally get it. It's, it's out there, especially 20 years ago. No one knew what that was. No one really was open to talking about it unless you were with your people who were already doing it. I would love to ask you, when you were sharing about how you took a year before you could tell anyone about what you were doing, and you know, you said that you realized it was a you problem, not really a business problem, and I'm willing to bet that those that are listening with a spiritual business and struggling, they probably already know that. Like, I'm sitting here going, yep, that's totally something that I can relate to. My biggest thing is, even though like I have no problem putting it out there, what I do, I've come, I've been able to, to overcome the part that, of me that says, oh my gosh, I shouldn't talk about this, but it's still like, there's a part of me that's still like, oh, but what if like, oh, who am I? You know what I mean? I just kind of want to play small still. And I don't really want to fully like embrace it. Like what did you do? What helped you in that year transition from being afraid to embracing it? I'd love to hear like what you'd either recommend for that or what you experienced with that. What I did, I was really digging deep into myself and finding fears and facing those fears to really understand what is the pain behind the fear? What is really, really preventing me? And one of fears I found, I think many people can relate to that, is if I have my business, I will not have enough time for my daughter, for my family. And that was something like that really kept me playing small because I was scared. What if I fail and the whole world watches all these people who were my clients, who were my colleagues, bosses? I fail and everybody sees that. What is going to happen? And then I realized that nothing will really happen because what when I start posting more and more after I got that card from my professor. And I noticed that so many people started reaching out to me to ask me what I'm doing, actually, what I'm talking about, what what is energy healing? And all of a sudden, all these people that I was so afraid of, <laughs> what they are going to say, they start reaching out to me to, to explain what I'm doing. They were so curious. And as soon as they start really understanding what I'm doing, they wanted to know more about that and some of them became my clients. Unexpectedly, everything happened really unexpectedly, but I want to encourage everybody who is going through this journey and thinking, oh my God, how I'm going to do this? Because what if they judge me? I really want to encourage you to start posting because people that you feel afraid of, what they are going to say about you, I promise you they will come to you to ask for help or ask for clarification what you do. And most people, like I still that I still have that when I visit my parents, their friends stop me at the street and say, hey, I don't understand everything what you do, but I'm proud of you. <laughs> I love what you do. So this is what is going to happen to you. Like, nothing will really happen if people don't like your post. Nothing will really happen if somebody doesn't like what you do, because that's not your problem. That's their problem because maybe that's not meant for them. Not, not in this time. Maybe the time is going to come, but this is your time. This is your mission. And you, we all have amazing gifts that were given to us by universe. If universe believed in us, why would we ever doubt in ourselves? Because the universe has much bigger picture than you and I, and it knows what is going to happen. So if universe believed in us, why would it, we ever doubt in ourselves? And we need to start trusting ourselves. And that's actually life purpose for me, to use your gifts to serve the world. And when you really do this from the place of love, you become happy. And this is how you live your soul purpose. Yeah, I love that. I love that answer a lot. It's all about being authentic, right? And living in that space. And Trusting yourself is extremely like I, for, for my speaking for myself, trusting myself has always been one of my struggles. But when I found the work that I do as a tarot reader, every time I sit with someone, it just feels so kismet. Like I feel like I'm supposed to be there and I see what it does. 
So it's just crazy that I do still struggle with like, well, am I really, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing? But yeah, you're right. There's a reason why I was drawn to this work. And there's a reason why doors open when I lean into it versus resist, right? So I, I love that message so much. And it's true. I, I can speak to what you're saying as far as like, let's say that those people you're afraid of seeing what they, what you do and that backlash, I was terrified of that. And while I didn't necessarily get, you know, pe the people I was most afraid of reaching out for help, they just left me alone. <laughs> you know, like that fear of the backlash never happened. It was more like the fear of the fear and then realizing it wasn't really something I had to put energy into because it, there's nothing that was actually coming from it. Like I thought, so I'm really glad that you mentioned, you know, just pushing forward because either A, like you said, you'll have these people coming out of the woodwork where you're like, oh, wow, you're interested or you'll just have people who won't likely won't attack you for it. They'll just give you your space to, to do what you're going to do and, and lean into your own energy. So I'm really glad that you mentioned that. And I would love to ask you, so do you feel like you found your purpose in you know, in this work that you're doing, I know that you, you mentioned how passionate you are and, and how fulfilling it is, but like, what is it about what you do that lights you up? I would definitely say I found my purpose. Sometimes when I look back, I start laughing and say, the universe, you're so funny. <laughs> you're really so funny because I was doing marketing, then I got sick, then I got into healing and then I helped other healers and all of a sudden I'm doing marketing and healing combined and it makes me so happy because the transformation I see in, in people's lives is priceless and for me the biggest motivation is really when you see young mom for example one of my clients young mom three kids she used to work in another country to provide for her family she had to leave kids with the grandparents and then it broke her heart and she would come back and she would see, just see kids for a few days and go back to work. And when I met her, she didn't even believe that she could have a business. She didn't even know that she's talented. She was like, I don't know how to do business. I don't know how to do anything of, like you're talking. I said, like, let's try. And at the beginning, she started getting two clients per month. And now she has two clients per day. Her whole life changed. And what I love about this story, because I really want to inspire people. She didn't have a business experience. She didn't know marketing. She didn't have a social media presence. She didn't even know how to do that. She only had the burning desire to change something in her life. And now she is with her kids after four years of working abroad. For the first time, kids have a mother. And that's the story that inspires me. That's the story that makes me, this is the right thing to do. And I need to do more of that. Because let's be honest, if you help big company make more money, nothing will really change in society. But if you help a single mom with three kids, be present with them, provide for them, stay at home and watch them grow, and kids have mother to grow up with, that changes a lot. That really makes a huge change impact in our society wow that is that is such a touching story and it's true when we're able to see that the other side of it and for you that's I mean that's huge I, I'm, I'm sure you don't always see transition you know that's probably one of those stories you're like oh my gosh I did that and you know I helped this one you know this one lady go from having to work away from her kids and be, being reunited with them you know, that I can not imagine how fulfilling and beautiful that is, but knowing that you can recreate that with other people you work with all the time, maybe not necessarily on such a grand scale, but maybe eventually it'll be a bigger scale, but just, you know, just that one story is magical. I think that that's also important too, is, you know, these changes that we make with other people, it's big for them too. You know what I mean? Like, even if it's, if you help someone overcome a fear, and now they're doing better in the business versus, you know, this other really amazing story. It's just as profound in their lives as it was for this mom. You know what I mean? They're they're all profound in their own beautiful ways. I love how you explain that. And that story was just so touching. It's time to take a short break from our wonderful speaker. Are you in the need of guidance around love, career, family, life, or purpose? Embark on a spiritual journey inward with an intuitive tarot reading. Depending on what you're needing and looking for, I offer private one-on-one -on -one sessions as well as personalized email readings. It doesn't matter what the question is. A reading with me provides connection with your higher self, 
offering curated personal messages, or what I like to refer to as spiritual roadmaps, guiding you to the future outcome you desire. Readings are insightful and affordable. If you'd like more information or to schedule a reading with me, please see the link below. What is one struggle that, and I know you may have touched on this, but there may be something else. What is like the biggest struggle that you see with your clients, the main one? And then what is the advice you'd give for that struggle? Yeah, I see a few things happening in the healing industry. First of all, so many gifted and talented people started this calling because they want to serve the world. And very often they find themselves stuck and stressed and overwhelmed with the business side of that. And I just want to say to everybody who's listening, it's not your fault. We have never learned how to run a business. We have never learned how to write offers. And what you don't know, you simply don't know. And if you want to be successful in business, healing skills are very important because you want to create the best results for your clients. But you also need to know how to run business because your healing skills alone will not make you money. But the way how you run your business will. That's the first thing that needs to happen. The second thing is to help people really overcome fear of selling. And I always say to them, like, selling is helping your clients solve the problem they're praying and hoping to get solved. And it's just an act of service and help. And marketing is your tool to get that message to, to the world and tell them how you can help them and what are the results of your work. Because let's be honest, if people are going through a really dark period of their life. They are looking for a solution. Nobody wants to be in pain and trauma. Nobody wants to suffer and cry. People want to be happy. That's the mission. People want to be happy. But the problem is very often they have fears, doubts, limiting beliefs. And on top of that, they have challenging environment. They have problems with their friends, family members, co-workers. There's a lot of things happening in their life. And they try to change. They really try, but their fears are stopping them. The environment is stopping them. And that's why the work we do is very important because we help them to heal. And also we are support for them as they heal and help them really build sustainable habits. So when they heal, they can continue their life transformation positive way. And that's the another thing. And also the third thing about them seeing is Everybody is copying each other in the healing industry. Everybody believes somebody else knows better than I do. But the thing is, 82% of coaches and healers fail in the first two years of having business. 82%. That's a big number. So if everybody is copying each other, there's a very huge percentage of people will fail. So if you really want to succeed, you need to do the opposite to what everybody else is doing. And you will see that in the industry... People sell one-on-one -on -one sessions all the time. And the problem with one-on-one -on -one sessions, the biggest reason for that is you cannot solve the client's biggest problems in just one session. Healing takes time. You need to take your clients on the journey and help them really not only heal, but also build sustainable habits. So when they start working with you, they can continue transformation. And when you sell one-on-one -on -one sessions, it's not predictable, it's not scalable. And it really is frustrating. I remember when I did that, uh, I became a mom. I had four years old, uh, four months old baby at that time. And I was selling one-on-one -on -one sessions. I had sessions in the morning, sessions in the afternoon, sessions in the evening. I couldn't find such a flexible babysitter. I had the clients to serve. I had a baby to take care. My whole life looked like a mess. And I was thinking to myself, is that all that is going to be? I remember one day I was typing an email to my client while holding my baby in the other arm. And I was thinking, is that all? Because I felt like I'm a failing as a mother, I'm failing as a business owner because I couldn't juggle so much. And then I realized that if I want to succeed, I have to do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. I need to really... First of all, create business around my life and really create a business that serves me. And the second thing is create programs that I can invite my people 
to come and join. And that was really big shift for me because all of a sudden I went from calendar that looked like a mess to having sessions twice per week. And I invited all my clients to come and join. That save like that gave me so much time and freedom and flexibility to do things in my business. And I definitely recommend everybody to do that because your clients will appreciate you. Your clients will get better results. They will love working with you. And you will have more time, more freedom, and more flexibility to do things you love. Yeah, thank you. Those were both, I mean, I'm going to go back and listen to this when I edit, because I'm like, this is some really potent information. Thank you so much for taking the time to share that, that what you see and, and how how people can navigate that. Because it's, you know, one thing to struggle with it, then it's another thing to figure out, well, now what? And so you've beautifully explained some struggles and how to move forward and work through it. And I really love what you shared too about how a lot of the times people are copying each other. And I see that too. I didn't realize that percentage was so high with coaching, although it doesn't necessarily surprise me. Like I totally believe that coaching and healing and service work, like I think all of that is valid. And I think everyone has a place and can be successful. But when you're trying to do it the cookie cutter way, <laughs> That's when it tends to crumble. And it's hard because if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to try and look to other people. This reminds me a lot of how I would read The King of Wands, which is all about doing it your own way, blazing your own trail, figuring out what works for you and doing what's authentic. So using mar so basically marketing in an authentic way, which sounds a little bit counterintuitive. I think some people think, well, how can I market authentically because if don't I have to do it all like a certain way in fact I'd love to ask you because you're kind of in this how do you take something as rigid as marketing and put and make it more your own first of all the biggest thing you need to do first is really focus on your story why you're doing this and why you want to have this business when you get crystal clear why you want to have this business and how you want your business to be it's much easier to create that because very often when I talk to healers, when I ask them, what do you want? They say, I don't know. I'm in flow, whatever universe brings to me. But in order for universe to deliver to you, it needs to know what you want. And it really is about getting clear what you want and creating life that you want. And the second thing is, People think that they are selling sessions, courses, and membership. Nobody wants to buy courses, sessions, and memberships. People, what people really want to buy is you, your story. They want to know how you can serve me and help me. They resonate with your energy. And the next thing what is really happening here, they want to know what kind of results you can create for them. When you combine your story with results you create for your clients, this is where magic happens. And this is how you can really market it authentically. Just be you. Share your story and tell why you have this business. Why is this important to you? Why is this important to your clients? What kind of results you can create for them? Start with these four things and you will create a really big shift in your business. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, that makes sense. Because when, you, when you're focusing on your story and your why you you have an anchor right you have that you know where you're coming from and where you want to go and you're right the, the universe can't give you anything if you're just waiting for it to show up for you it, it wants it's a combination it's co-creation right i think that a lot of people forget that we are co-creating with the universe you know it's it's a combination of what we're wanting to bring to the world and then what the universe has in store for us but we have to kind of be willing to work with both of those so thank you. Thank you for sharing that. What is one lesson that you've learned in this work? So, you know, starting back to where you switched from corporate to doing your healing up till now, what is probably the biggest lesson you've learned along the way? The biggest lesson is you can never stop learning. You can never stop learning. You can never stop improving. Everything what you do in your business, you need to test and see because what works for me will not work for you. And you need to make sure that you have things that work for you. And the biggest thing is really just test everything. See what kind of results you get. If you don't get results you, you like, you always can go back, improve, tweak, make it better, do it again. 
And very often people think that first time when they do something, they will be immediately successful, which is really not always the case. In most cases, it's not that. But in most cases, that it doesn't happen like this. And very often I saw that when people look at very successful healers, they forget that these people invested so many years in trying and doing these things. It wasn't overnight success. It was really hard work involved. And they spent a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of energy in this business. And it cannot happen overnight. It's a process. It takes time to build a successful business. And the reason for that is very often because there are certain things that need to be created inside the business. For, for example, you offer your course, your membership, whatever you want to sell, and you need to put certain systems and processes in place so you can grow your business. And that's something that so many people forget. And especially at the beginning of your journey, if you think, I don't know what to do, the easiest way how to overwhelm yourself is go on the internet and search everything what's possible and start implementing everything. You really need to get clear what you want, how you want your business and find the right strategy for you that works for you. And especially at the beginning, it's very important that you invest in yourself. And the reason for that is very often we don't know what solution is available to us. We really don't know what's even possible. And when you start learning, when you start growing, this is where the whole new door open for you and new possibilities. I always share the story when I was uh, at university, I had a class with one of my friends and I, at that time I was wearing glasses. So he asked me to borrow my glasses. I said, yeah, sure. And he put my glasses on and he said to me, oh my God. Next time he came to, to the class and he had his own glasses. I said like, I thought, I thought you, you don't need glasses. He said to me, yeah, I didn't know how much I didn't see. And when I put your glasses on, I realized that I really didn't see so much. <laughs> and that's the same is with learning. You really don't know what are the options out there. So keep learning, keep investing in yourself, keep growing. And the message I have is the entrepreneurial journey is the fastest self-development journey. Your fears are going to come up. Your doubts are going to come up. Limiting beliefs. A lot of things are going to come to the surface. And you need to face them. And what you learn in running your business in one year, it will take you more than 20 years working for somebody else. So it really is past uh, self-development journey. Yeah, 100% the last thing you just shared. I've been, I've, so I've been an entrepreneur for off and on for like seven years. I mean, then, then, then I started doing more spiritual work, which is a totally different, you know, area of entrepreneurship, I feel like, just because there's more of an anchor there. But even before I got into the spiritual side, yeah, it was like, you, you, especially sales, you have to learn how to overcome these things and be willing to, oh, that didn't work. Let me shift here. And oh, that didn't work. And, you know, but then you add the spirituality to it. And it's just like self-development on steroids. Because <laughs> then at that point, you're looking at healing and you're looking at trauma and you're looking at serious blockages and stuff like that. So yeah, it's definitely when you're an entrepreneur, especially more, you know, in, in that spiritual realm, it's just, you're on the fast track for sure, but you have to do the work. And I think that that's, you have to remember that the work is important. And not only that, but I love how you shared that you're, you know, that, that you're always learning and you're encouraging others to always learn because sometimes the world kind of pushes us to become an expert. The world kind of wants us to plateau and say, okay, I'm done learning. Look at me. I, I did it. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. And that happens, you know, in when you're, when you're a business owner, I think being able to acknowledge that, okay, even though maybe I'm successful now, maybe I've reached all my goals, but I'm still learning, you know, being open to know that the world's changing, you're changing, you're evolving. What you're doing now may shift to something else, but it would only do that if you're still open to being a student, to learn that there's other ways and other things that might even connect with you better than what you're doing now. So yeah, I love that encouragement to keep learning. I think that that's not only beautiful, but just so incredibly true. From here, I would love to shift to what I like to call synchronicity story time. It's my favorite 
segment just because it's just so magical. And I know you, you've kind of shared a couple things already. I do feel like your story into this work was also synchronistic too, but do you have any specific or other stories you can, that's up your sleeve that you could share with us as well? Oh yeah, definitely. A lot of stories I could share with you, but I think one of the stories was, I think I was trying to book a flight to New York and I, I remember sitting and trying and trying and trying and didn't go through it, didn't go through it, didn't go through it. I was like, maybe the universe is trying to tell me something. <laughs> and I, I said, okay, I will come back in two days. In two days, I came back and I tried to book a flight. It didn't work. I said, whatever, I will try in two days. And then I booked the flight seven days later. And that was the biggest blessing because if I had booked that option first, when I was trying to book my first flight, if I had booked that, I would be stuck at the airport because there was a huge storm, airport was closed and yeah, there were no flights. And I think I always say thank you universe for that experience. I also had another story. I remember I was trying to move to Austria from from my country, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I was trying to move to Austria. I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it because my parents didn't allow me to move to another country. And at that time, two years after that trial, and I decided to try again. But this time I didn't tell my parents. And two days before I left Bosnia, I told my parents I'm leaving and they were in shock. It's like, what's what's happening i thought i thought you will never move to austria so I'm like yeah but this time i want to move to austria at that time when i came to austria that was i would think the everything shifted so fast because i started really i started going to to the university i started studying but the most importantly everything shifted for me because two years after i came to austria i opened a company with my husband so it was an advertising agency that completely changed our life. We started that business as a side hustle, but it turned into something much bigger, doing marketing campaigns for Fortune 500 companies. And I, you know, when I told my parents that I will take care of myself, they didn't believe me. <laughs> you know, it was really far away from them, you know, and they didn't want me to leave. But now when I go back, my father tells me, thank God you left. Thank God you moved because now you have much better life. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, you were probably being drawn and pulled intuitively to move. And that's so hard as a parent. I think, you know, it depends on how open you are as a parent. And I think the older generation has a harder time with that because maybe back in their day, that was something that their kid, you know, they didn't do for their parents, you know. And But I think that, well, I'm glad that they're open, that they're seeing the benefits, because sometimes that doesn't happen either. So I'm glad they're open to it. And I'm glad you listened, because it sounds like it really, you were meant to go. And if you had ignored that intuitive calling, it, you may not be where you are now. You, you know what I mean? You like you wouldn't, or that would have been delayed. So that's beautiful. And the the flight story was very cool. So yeah, and every time when I try to do something, if I cannot do it, like first time, the second time, the third time, I would just leave it and come back to that later. And if I cannot do it, then I will just give up. I will leave it for a few days or a few days, a few months, and I will come back to that. But I always believe that universe is telling us something. We are just not listening. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And that is a good lesson for like, even in marketing, right? If, if a marketing strategy you're doing isn't working, you're constantly hitting a wall then maybe the same strategy, maybe stop with that strategy and give it a break for a bit and try something else and then maybe come back to it. Maybe it's a strategy that'll work later or maybe it's just not the right strategy. But yeah, it's learning how to surrender and trust. And that's hard, but totally like what we're supposed to be doing, not just in our business, but like in our lives, right? So the final question I'd love to ask is, do you believe that we all have a purpose? Oh yeah, definitely. I truly believe we all have purpose. We all have a soul gift that were given to us by, by the universe. Very often people don't know that they have a gift and very often they, they stand too close to the gifts. They, they use them every day and it's nothing special for them. But for some people, it's a big deal. 
And very often we forget how amazing we are. And when you start exploring your gifts, when you start seeing what you're really good at and how you can use your gifts to serve the world, this is how you discover your purpose. You know, we all have a purpose. We all have a gift. We were all given these gifts by universe. And yeah, as I said, if universe believed in us, why would we ever doubt in ourselves? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. It's so true. And I, I, I agree that too, that, you know, we, we all, we're here for a reason, right? We're not an accident. <laughs> we're literally a walking miracle. The fact that we're even living, breathing and, and here right now. So when you can embrace that, you know, that there is a higher power at work when you can trust that it's okay. Now, what am I supposed to be doing here? Why am I here? So I love that so much. If our listeners want to work with you, if they want to, you know, check you out and see what you offer and, you know, get that help in their own marketing. How can they find you? So you can find me uh, on my website, ninamaglik.com. You can also find me on Instagram. I'm Nina Maglik. YouTube, I have a YouTube channel where I post every single week a video to help healers get clients, expand their reach and have a bigger impact doing the work they love. I also have my membership called Healing Millions, where I combine healing mindset and business coaching. It's a beautiful community of heart-centered healers. Yeah, you can find me there. You can find me on my website. Yeah, I would love to connect with you. Perfect. I'll be sure to put all of that in the show notes. So if you want to work with Nina, you'll know where to find her and how to find her. Thank you so much for joining me today, Nina. And thank you for your patience. I know that we had some issues trying to get together, you know, conflicts with schedules, but I'm so glad we finally got to talk and chat. And I love what you're teaching because merging these two big ideas and these big, you know, I mean, they're very separate, but they're, but, but healers need to combine that marketing if they want to be seen and found. And we need that expertise from someone who knows how to merge both. So your wisdom and your your expertise that you shared today has just been so helpful. And I'm glad you're able to join me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here. It was my honor to be here. Thank you so much for the work you do. You are really just a true blessing to this world. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on another inspiring episode. Remember, your purpose is a unique and unfolding path. I hope these conversations have ignited a spark within you. Until next time, keep exploring, growing, and embracing the beautiful adventure of connecting with your purpose. Stay tuned for more meaningful conversations. If you enjoyed the episode today, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for joining me on this journey.